I'm inside the car. Let's turn on the ignition and let's see what does the driver every time sees. He has some small overdues above the service, but it's not our problem. But can you see now the pedestrian protection system? Brake drive system is not connected with that anyhow, but that, that yellow message appears every single time and on the main display as well. Hi all, I'm Vladimir, you are on the Beamer Dog channel. Today we have that beautiful F11 in my garage and that car has issues with pedestrian protection system. What is the system? Why it was developed? How does it work? What sensors does the system have? How to diagnose the error and how to fix that officially and, offic and uh, unofficially? We will cover all those topics in today's video. It will be very interesting. Stay tuned. First of all, briefly, what is pedestrian protection system? If you have the option 8TF or Tango Foxtrot in your VIN code, if you decode it, you will see that pedestrian protection system, active pedestrian protection system, is built into a vehicle. What is that system? Actually, if by the accident you hit the pedestrian, it will fall to your bonnet. And the greater is the distance between the bonnet and the engine, the softer will be the uh, hit for the pedestrian. That's why in case of the crash, the sensors inside the front bumper, usually there is from one to three sensors, it depends on the system structure, they will detect that there was a hit to the bumper. Then under the hood, there are four paratechnical cartridges that will fire up the hood up to approximately five centimeters higher. It will make the hit for the pedestrian softer. And that's why the uh, possibility that person will get uh, more harm is smaller. So let's have a closer look to the system, how it's built. I'll open up the bonnet. So come closer here to see better. So the system uh, under the hood, there are four cartridges, per technical cartridges. Over here, you can see the yellow plug. This is the plug, the real connection to the cartridge. So when the heat occurs, it will be fired up and the bonnet will go uh, uh, higher to make more distance. Another cartridge is located over here. You can see over here, again, the yellow plug. This is also the part that will release the hooks that are holding the bonnet. And exactly the same thing, what is on left side of the car, will be on the right side as well. So, what's next? We know the locations of the paratechnic cartridges and the sensors that are inside the front bumper. But in order to fix the system, we have to know what's actually wrong with that. So which of those sensors is malfunctioning? That's why we have to make the diagnostics to the car. I'll use the official BMW software for that. It's called ISTA, Integrate, Integrated Service Technical Application. That's the full aberration um, of that uh, diagnostical software. We'll see which of those is malfunctioning. The official way to repair that issue will be to replace that sensor and just erase the errors. Everything will be fixed. In our case, because it's not the newest car anymore, the owner of that car prefers that system to be disabled. And it's also absolutely okay. So today we'll diagnose, find which of the sensor is not working. We have to disable all the sensors and code it out with using of the ACES, that engineering software meant to be working with the BMWs. If you haven't worked with the ACES before, it will be a bit more difficult for you today to understand how it's working and so on. That's why I see my ACES for dummies uh, part one up to part three already, there's a lot of information how to use the proper software because without that, you'll be unable to fix your BMW correctly. But now let's go in car, into the car and see how the error looks like from the driver perspective. I'm inside the car, let's turn on the ignition and let's see what does the driver every time sees. He has some small overdues about the service, but it's not our problem. But can you see now the pedestrian protection system? Brake drive system is not connected with that anyhow, but that, that yellow message appears every single time and on the main display as well. So if you have that error, you know that your pedestrian protection system is not working properly. So now I'm using the ISTA, the diagnostical software, to scan the car and to see what's actually wrong with that. My guess is that one of the front sensors inside the bumper is malfunctioning because that's the most common mistake. And as I told you, in the front bumper, that could be from one up to three sensors. It depends on the system itself. Uh, in a second, in the east, I'll show you what are the different systems and how do they operate more exactly. 
and what we can see the ACSM this is the airbag ECU it, it is yellow it has some errors and let's see what do we have so the diagnostics has been finished and we can see the FGS staffing sensor this is the part of the pedestrian protection system and that error is still present there are some other errors also on that car I will consult the owner of that car how to deal with those for example the transfer box oil wear uh, he told me that he has visited another workshop the oil uh, was replaced in the transfer box but they were unable to clear that error uh, I don't know why but I'll clear that uh, afterwards so no problem but at the moment we're working with the pedestrian protection system we can see the FGS staffing sensor let's open up that error and we can see that error occurred 255 times this is the maximum counter uh, it cannot be any higher that's why and it is still effective error it means if I'll erase that the error will not go off from the car it is active error we can see all the log when it was present at what mileage and so on and so on but how that the system actually is built let's calculate the test plan and over here we can see the ABL for pedestrian protection system uh, let's open that up and over here you can see on the right how the system is actually built so this is the safety crash module ACSM where all the information is stored and actually that issue it controls the airbags and it's, it is also responsible for the pedestrian protection as I told you there are different system in BMW there are three of those for example on that system in the front bumper there is a special um, fiber optic uh, line and actually you can see if the, pe uh, if the car hits the pedestrian the, that line will be bent and that's why the light signal will travel with another speed and that's why how the car knows that the crash occurred so in that system you can see there is only one sensor present over here and this is the only the loop and that's how it works the second type of the system with the three separate sensors without any line those are just acceleration sensors so uh, if you have that kind of system then you have in the front bumper to dis disable or disconnect the three sensors and the most common system found on BMWs is that one so there is one sensor over here with the exactly same fiber optic uh, line with the loop in the end the loop does not have any other connections but in the center there is another sniffing sensor and I guess in our case either that one or that one is faulty actually because East already told me that is sniffing sensor so it is the middle one that will be faulty that's how the system is built uh, for better overview I can open you the wiring diagram I'll make a full screen zoom it in and actually over here you can see this is crash safety module this is ACSM module those lower ones four of those remember under the hood we look the pyrotechnical cartridges so those ones look like that one over here so there are four of those under the hood and also under the bonnet there is one sensor and another sensor you can always see the location of those on that picture that will be uh, that one and the sensor called A68 it will be that one the whole trick is in the sequence how you perform your work if at that moment I will just try to code the vehicle and tell the vehicle okay BMW just forget to have the system I will fail it will not work because all those sensors we have seen before they actually they are connected to the safety crash ECU and even if I'll try to code out those options those sensors the ECU sees actually that something is connected to it and that's why it just refuses the new coding data that's why we need to disconnect the four plugs under the hood and in addition two sensor two sensors in the front bumper so the uh, safety crash issue will not see those anymore and only after that perform all the codings and only in that sequence you will be successful in addition to that what I have told you you also require to do some codings you'll see that those soon now let's go and disconnect all those needed sensors and pyrotechnic cartridges but before that don't forget to turn off your ignition because you will be working with the 
electro electronic components of your car, it is also recommended if you are not sure how the car performs to disconnect the negative terminal of the car battery. If you are working with the uh, safety, uh, safety systems of the car, it is highly recommended not to deploy your airbags. The tools you might require is definitely use some gloves to protect the hands and some small screwdriver. Location of the sensors, not the sensors, but actually the pyrotechnical cartridges, there are four of those, as you remember, in the front light, over there, and uh, on the other side the same. So, in the front light, you can see the yellow plug. Actually, there is a small clip. You just have to it unclick it. I don't know if you have heard it to the camera, and then you can remove the plug. After the job will be done, it is always good to insulate those plugs so they will remain clean. Because at the moment we didn't have any errors with those pyrotechnical cartridges. It means they are working okay. And the same jo job for the others. We have disconnected four pyrotechnical cartridges. Now my favorite part, disconnecting the sensors in the front bumper. Luckily, you don't need to take off the front bumper, you will have enough room to assess from under the car. Yes, you have to go under the car, remove the plastic coverage, and then you'll have enough space. Usually, there is no problem disconnecting the sensor from under the car. Sometimes there are problems with the middle one. So on some cars, it is easier to assess not from the under the car, but, but remove one of the grills to have the better assess. Let's see how it goes. So now I'm under the car, I have removed the plastic cover that is protecting everything uh, from the below. It's just uh, unscrewed a couple bolts and that's it. And actually this is the right side of the car. Over there with the red circle I have highlighted you, you can see the plug. You have to remove that. That's one of those that have to be removed and just disconnected. I have disconnected it. It is really narrow access over there, so I cannot show you how to disconnect that, but just unplug it, it's really straightforward. Now let's go to the uh, center part of the car. Let's remove one of the grills, because as you can see, from under the car, we just cannot assess it anyhow. Over here is the radiator, and it's in front of, so that's why you have to go to from outside of the car to assess that uh, central connector. Now let's disconnect the middle sensor, it should be somewhere in that region, so that's why the easiest assess will be through the grill. Uh, for that you have to remove the screws from the bumper, so the upper part of the bumper will be loose, and then you have to go underneath and try to unlock the grills. You'll see, when, uh, you'll see better the construction when I'll disassemble those. So guys, I was wrong a bit, actually removing that grill is not necessary, it was also a part of the pain. The actual procedure would be just take the pliers and remove that part it just clips off just be really gentle then you have to remove that middle part because that sensor we need to disconnect is actually right behind there and access to that it is actually very complicated that's why I just disconnect that one and i'll show you in a second where it is exactly located And I have removed the black trim, that one, and actually that sensor, it is held by T30 Torx. You can see a lot of corrosion there and so on, so maybe that's the problem, because the, the sensor went bad. And this is the plug we have to disconnect. Now we have disconnected all needed sensors and pyrotechnical cartridges. Now we can proceed to the coding. And for the coding process, I'll connect additional power supply to the car. The coding process does not require additional power, but the owner of the car, he lives in the town, he doesn't drive his car a lot, that's why his battery might be not in the best shape. That's why, if possible, always connect additional power supply. Power supply is mandatory for programming of the BMWs. It is not necessary for coding or diagnostics. But just to a bit uh, recharge the battery, let's connect it. Always connect the plus first, to the plus terminal and after that only goes the earth or the negative terminal. Now hook up the power and the car consumes 30, 
38 amperes, the ignition is still off. It means actually the battery is not in the best shape at the moment. So let's charge a bit. And meanwhile, let's continue with the coding. Because I got a bit dirty during uh, removing all those parts, I will not sit in the car anymore. I'm working outside. I'm using my Acom Nana, and that's why I can work remotely. Now you can see the screen of my laptop. Let's establish connection to the car. The things we need to do, now we'll need to find the option that's responsible for pedestrian protection system. It's F11, let's choose F10. Acom Nana, that's the right connection. Press connect, establish connection. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's go to expert mode, coding tab, read out vehicle order and read out the issues. Okay, that's good. Let's save the vehicle order. Actually, it is F11 FA and now we have to edit it. Over here, I know that the 8TF or Tango Foxtrot is responsible for the pedestrian protection. How do I know that? I've just done the job so many times. And in addition, some launchers, like, like for example, Aces Plus I'm using, it has built-in cheat sheet for all the options. And over here you can see the 8TF is active pedestrian protection. We need to remove that option. How you can remove that? You just go there and erase it. Press apply changes. Now we need to calculate the FP done and save the vehicle order. Now we have to go back. Aces asks, do you want to load the modified FA? Press yes, because we need uh, to modify that. And now you have to recode the ACSM ECU. This is the ECU responsible for the airbag system with modified vehicle order. If you have no idea what is vehicle order, how to work with that and so on, I have told in details about that in my ACS for dummies part two, you can see it over here. And that, now let's press code. What I'm doing by that process? With that process, I have removed the option that's responsible for the active pedestrian protection. And now I'm telling the car, more specifically the ACSM issue that actually you don't have that option anymore. And the process has finished successful, as you can as you can see. Uh, and over here, actually, I'll tell you one more trick. In addition to ACSM ECU, some of the cars require recording the combi or the cluster ECU as well. Let's press code it again. After that, we'll go to the car. The errors will still be present. So I'll just skip that step to save the time. Believe the errors will be present. You need to run the diagnostics again and erase the errors and only after that all the errors will disappear. And that's why I have launched the ACES Plus not to start the ISTA again because I can erase all the errors in ACES Plus. If you don't have ACES Plus, now run, open the ISTA again and just delete all the errors. In my case, I'll use ACES Plus. I'll go to DTC or Diagnostic Trouble Code and press Clear Errors. Now close, uh, refresh, and at the moment the car, the only error it has in transfer box, the oil is old. I'll fix that on the background, it's not our case, but now I'm 100% sure if I go to the car, the error will not be present. Let's go and see that. Now let's go to the car. So, and let's see what do we have here. So let's turn off the ignition. The brake system is still over there. Uh, add washer fluid, it's not a problem. So now let's turn on the ignition. Service due, it's okay. Altitude temperature, brake system, because the brake pad sensor uh, wires, they have uh, been damaged. Let's go now to vehicle information. Vehicle status. Check control, okay, brake fluid, uh, brake system, washer fluid, set date and time because I was coding the cluster and you don't see the annoying pedestrian protection system error anymore. And that's it, we can call it a fix. To solve the problem officially, you would have to replace 
that one sensor that was faulty in our case, it must not be the case uh, with your BMW. If you want to completely forget that option from the vehicle, you have to disconnect all the sensors I have shown you before and also perform the coding. In the coding process, the process I haven't shown you yet is how to save the new modified vehicle order into the car. That will be the topic of one of the future videos. That's why I haven't included that. But it would be very professional if you remove that option from the vehicle to save modified vehicle order into the car as well. Uh, why? Because if someone, uh, another uh, workshop or another owner will start the coding uh, his vehicle with the vehicle order, he'll get the same error back because the option is still present in the car. So, but that will be covered in the future videos. The else, uh, things we have to do else are put everything back together, assemble everything in the front, I have actually already assembled it, go under the vehicle, connect everything back together, all the cars and everything, and the job will be done. If you still haven't subscribed to my channel, please feel free to do so. And actually, the job has been finished. Closing the hood, going under the vehicle, making all the last preparations, and that's it. See you next time. Bye.